I'm going to end up writing your code for you. I just know it. So uh, let's. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, more arrays and some random numbers. Um, so first of all, let's talk about there's a random number generator in every language that I know about. And they call them pseudo-random number generators because there's really no way to generate a random number reliably in a computer. Um, because after a while, they, they're going to start repeating at some point. So uh, there is a random number. And let's do it in IRB. So let's run the IRB console because it's faster. So the number is called, I mean, the function method is called rand. And if I hit rand, it gives me a, what type of data is this? Floating point number, OK? It gives me a floating point number between 0, 0.0 and 1.0. How many numbers are there in there? Lots. An infinite number of numbers between 0, 0.0 and 1.0. So if I run this again, if I just run rand again, it gives me a number different, 0.28. So if I, if I run this a bunch of times, I'm going to get a different number every single time. And you see it, it goes from 0 0.07 all the way up to 0.9. You know, so you're going to get some number in between that. All right. So how would I get a number between? Uh, 0 and 10. How might I change this to give me a number between 0 and 10? OK, so I have a floating point number here. What can I do to that number to make it bigger than it is? In parentheses, I think, do 1 dot. All right, you're, you're getting ahead of me. Okay. Right, there's a, a shortcut way. But if I just had a floating point number, how do I make that a bigger number? Multiply, Multiply it by something, right? So uh, when I'm trying to take a number, we call it scaling the number up. I can take that and multiply it by 10, and it will always give me a number that's between 0 and 10 now. So I can take my rand and multiply it by 10. And now you see I have a 6 point something, 3 point something, 4 point something. And you'll notice I got a 9 there. I never get anything uh, lower than a, a 0 or higher than a 10. And in fact, I will never actually get the number 10. Why? Right, I'm going to get 0 to 9, not 1 to 10, because uh, my floating point number is always going to be 0 0.9999999 which times 10 comes out to be 9.9999999. It's never going to actually equal 10. So, uh, so there you go. So I can also take this, if I want just a whole number, and say rand times 10. And I can convert it from a float to an integer, like we do when people enter a string on our console. And now I'm getting a whole number between 0 and 9. So I got a 9 there. I got a 0. 7, 5, 1, 4, 3, 2, whatever. So I'm never going to get a 10. All right, so these are just some ways of using this random method to get us a different number out. I'm, oh, I'm hitting the uh, up arrow key. The up arrow key brings me the back, the last thing I typed. And then I'm hitting return. So up return, up return. Isn't that great? <laughs> All right. How about if I want this number to be between 1 and 10 instead of 0 and 9? <laughs> Without doing that. <laughs> we'll get to that in a second. I'd add 1 to it, right? So I take my total number and convert it to an integer, and I add 1 to it. So I could do this whole thing and add a 1 to that. And now I'm going to get, I'm never going to get a 0. I get, a, I get a 10 finally. There we go. 10, 3, 2. I'm always going to get a number between 1 and 10. OK, good point. What if I did just times 11? What would that give me now? 
zero to ten. It doesn't give me one to ten. It gives me zero always to whatever that number is less one. So you see that. I'm going to get a number between zero and that number less one. So that's an important piece to know because random has some nice shortcuts because that's done a lot. I can, in the parentheses, pass it an argument that says, what's the biggest number I want? So if I put in a 10 here, that says, give me a number between 0 and what? No, 9. It takes one less than, just like we did before, just like if I multiply by 10, you have to think of it like it's going to take that number and multiply it by 10 here. So I'm going to get, I could get a 0. I got a 9. There's a 0. So uh, I'm only going to get up to 9. So if I wanted that between 1 and 10, 10 inclusive, what would I have to do to this? Plus 1. Very good. So that would give me 1 to 10. All right? Now, since that is also so common, they, the new version of Ruby, 190 and up, added a new feature. Actually, it's, it was in 193, I think. They added a new feature that lets you put a range of numbers inside of this random function. Uh, this will not work on Ruby 187, though, and below. So this is a new feature. So I can say random of 1 dot dot 10. And that means the two dots together says a number between 1 and uh, one and 10 inclusive. 1 and 10 inclusive. All right? So I'm going to get a 4, a 2, a 5, an 8, a 10. See, that's inclusive. That added the 1 for me. And the one, is, uh, the 1 is the smallest number I'm going to get. I should never get a 0 here. So I could change this and say I want a number between 5 and 10. And I get 5, 9, 8, 6, 7. Right. All right. So that's a nice shortcut to give me a number back. Uh, any questions on the random number then so far? All right. So let's say I have an array, well, this, this returns some number, and I just say, put that to the, on the right of an equal sign. So if I wanted a number, say, uh, computer choice equals rand of 1 dot dot 3, what number is computer choice going to have in it then? Whatever, right? What, oops, oh, that's interesting. Computer choice. So let's let's create a random number and print it out. So that I'm assigning whatever this returns. I'm stuffing it into my computer choice variable. And I get a one back. If I run it again, I get a three and a two and a one and a two and a whatever. So those are the random choices. And since it's a number. What can I use that number for in an array? Remember, an array, I could use numbers to index an array, right? I could look inside of an array and see what the values are there. So if I had an array like rock, paper, scissors equals some array, what might I put in this? Uh, see, I'm writing your code for you. Uh, what might I put inside of my rock, paper, scissors array? I could put the actual numbers, right? Rock, paper, scissors. See, and I only have to type scissors once. Uh, now the problem is, this, is, and this is a very common problem when you guys do this, uh, what happens with this random number? What numbers am I only going to get? One, two, or three. One, two, or three, right? And if I use that number to index my RPS, let's say I say print out RPS sub computer choice. Computer choice is an integer. That's going to have a number between 1 and 3, 1, 2, 3. But my array starts at 0. So in this case, I will, the computer will never choose rock.
No. Put a nil yeah, I could put a nil, right? We did nils before. I could put a nil here, and that takes up the zero space. And now this is always going to return, so let's just run it and see what I get back. I actually am going to print out the value of what is stored in my rock, paper, scissors array based on a random computer choice. Can't you also put it in computer choice plus one? Sure. Yes, I could. Lots of ways, hundreds of ways to do that. I could do zero dot dot two. That's going to give me a number between zero, which is this one, one, which is this one, and two, which is this one. So that's exactly the same way. Scissors, paper, rock. So you can see that I now have the computer choosing a random number that is then translated into a, a word for me by using this array system. Isn't that sweet? That's some cool stuff right there, man. So that's, that's the heartbeat of your program that I just wrote for you there. That's the heartbeat. The rest is comparing that choice with what the user chooses. Okay, any questions on any of that? We'll do more arrays on Monday until you're sick of arrays. And then we'll move on to hashes until you're sick of hashes. And so, you know, one thing at a time. All right.